Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and happy Friday, happy Saturday, wherever you are in the world. This is USA Global TV and Radio. We proudly provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. Hello to all of you who are watching or who are listening, whether it's on the live or the replay. We are super excited to have you here with us. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is The Power of Etiquette and Manners. And we're going to be discussing, I'm going to say, very delicate topic because this is really something that sets people apart, or I should say sets people off. We're going to talk about political etiquette and manners, navigating respect and diplomacy. Joining me is the star of our show. He is also an incredibly good friend and his organization, the British School of Excellence, is the sponsor for this show and many others that we have. The star of our show is Mr. Phil Sykes. He is the founder and principal of the British School of Excellence. He is also one of the main participants in the Royally Rich Lifestyle Show. We're thrilled to have him and we welcome him to our program now. Hello, Philip. Hello, Dr. Jacqueline. It's Friday. Friday. Can you believe it? And so I don't know where this week has gone. I really don't. It's just shot past and ready to take on this very sensitive subject. As you mentioned, political etiquette and manners. Do the leaders out there have them? It's a very good question, Philip. It's interesting, even on social media, you know, for your business and for my business, we are on social media all the time. And I just cannot believe some of the things that I read people posting. So no judgment, but I find myself just unfollowing someone, unfriending someone, because I don't want to hear all that negativity. I think everyone's entitled to their opinion, but you don't have to share it all the time and and make yourself the center of the conversation. But you're the expert when it comes to etiquette and manners. Let's have you share with our audience, especially people joining us for the first time. What is it that you teach there at the British School of Excellence? Our organization, thank you for asking, Dr. Jackton, really does focus on building confidence and changing people's lives through the power of etiquette, manners, emotional intelligence, understanding that this is a journey, it's a lifestyle choice. And when you embrace this, it changes your life, it changes the lives around you, and it opens the most incredible doors for you in not just business, but in your personal and your social world. It is an organization that is absolutely passionate about giving you those quintessential tools that have almost been forgotten about or have not been taught or have not been introduced, should I say. And it boils down to taking on board these amazing tools and the, and, and the skill set that we deliver and we share it with you. We give you the journey, the route of how to implement this into your, into your life and how it, as I said earlier, changes your world and your life. And we work with children as young as six with our Kitty Kit program. We've got mindset and motivation, mindset and uh, financial sort of in introduction for teenagers, as well as mindset and motivation. And then we go into the Polish professional. We've got train the trainer. We have EQ programs. We focus also in the space of high performance deliverance and coaching. And as an organization, we have the privilege of working with some incredible brands around the world on customer service, customer excellence, and how do we build that incredible rapport with your clients who then eventually should become a guest to you. 
Thank you, Philip. And of course, your organization has worked with some of the biggest corporation names in the world. So that really says something. And for individuals who take your course, Train the Trainer, they are more than welcome to come to our platform here and share their story with us. So it's, it's a wonderful collaboration that we have going here. I'd like to start talking about our topic, which is political etiquette. So as you know, we have a, a presidential election coming up very soon in November. You've had some elections there as well. They're very important uh, when you're in the UK. And uh, people tend to really get heated one way or another, not just about the candidate, but about the various issues that are being discussed. And sometimes it can break up friendships. It can break up families. Is there a way to mitigate this or to avoid it completely? <laughs> I don't know about a way of mitigating it. However, I do believe that through the right sort of questioning and probing little bits of questioning when you're connecting with be it a close friend or people you've sort of met uh, at the school gate so to speak and you're not quite sure of their political standing or beliefs is to ask some delicate questions and wait for the answer you know the art of listening is very very important and not to jump to conclusions uh, and i think approaches with a very much an open mindset because we're all entitled to our views and our beliefs and whatever we sort of are led to believe via the political parties involved, that's up to us how we digest that material. And then we have a choice to, as I mentioned, to choose which direction or who we want to vote for. Now I can share my sort of overviews with you, Dr. Jacqueline, or with a friend, but not necessarily with hardcore shoving it in your face and saying it's the only way uh, my values and my principles are the only things that count and stand. I've got to be able to open my radar and, and my, my, almost my, my antenna and, and really try and understand your input and why you might be voting for a, set, a different party. And this is crucial. I think this is not just for politics. This is for whatever you may be discussing in life and especially sensitive, um, se sensitive topics. Yes, especially the sensitive topics. And something that I'd like to share with you, and I'd like to have you weigh in on this, is that for myself, I don't let people know which party I'm going to vote for or which party I have voted for. I just listen with an open mind and I hear what people have to say. And I'll ask questions just like what you are sharing. And so I'll never give someone a direct answer because it's really none of their business. And I don't want to ostracize someone one way or another. So to me, it is a personal decision that we make. And I am very open to hearing people from both sides or even independent to come forward and share what it is they think, because I'm very curious about learning. And at the same time, I don't feel that I need to put how I feel out there to them. I, I love that approach. And I think it's a very sensible and very thoughtful approach. I, I really do. That is using your antenna. That is you really understanding that situational awareness, the self-awareness, and understanding who am I engaging with? Are they the type of person that could become confrontational? Are they the sort of person that could take umbrage? Are they the person that could write you off their Christmas card list? One needs to be very sensitive to these sort of um, areas, as I mentioned, not just politics, but it can be a plethora of very sensitive subjects. Yes, thank you, Philip. We just had, uh presidential debate here. And I watched most of it. I, I didn't watch all of it, but I saw some pros and some cons on both sides. And afterwards, you know, the next day people were calling me and telling me what they thought. And sometimes people getting really heated and yelling. What are you? And I just, I didn't even engage. I said, you know what? I have no comment. What do you mean you have no comment? It's your obligation as a citizen. I said, oh, okay, I don't need you getting on your post and, and your soapbox and lecturing me. It's okay. I will make a decision and it's my decision to make, but I don't want to engage in this conversation any further. And then there was nothing more for them to say because I basically just shut them down and then they wanted to get off the phone, which was fine. I love that approach again. I think it's great. Shut people down, but do it in a, in a really nice manner you don't need to be aggressive about it but you will dr jacqueline as we always uh, will have in life people will probe you oh, come on dr jacqueline you must have someone that you favor philip i don't really want to talk about it right now it's none of your business and actually i keep certain things to myself oh please dr jacqueline that's when you just change your tonality and say philip i have said before i value our friendship 
let's not go down this journey. Let's change the subject or just automatically change the subject, shift the gear into a completely different area and bring some humor to it, uh, bring some fun to it, bring some lighter conversation into play. Definitely. And I think that it's part of a larger conversation that, that you and I have talked about many times, which is setting boundaries and asking permission. So often, especially in the work that I'm doing, I'm sure the work you're doing as well, I have people telling me what to do all the time. You should be doing this. Or you should be doing that. And I think that also parlays itself into political discussions. You should vote for this person. You, have you thought about this and the impact of this on that? And so where I'm going with this is, I think it is, it's really a necessity to ask for permission before you start giving your opinion about something and ask for permission to problem solve. Because what happens is people get put on the defensive that all of a sudden you know what's best for them. You know what's best for this country. You know what's best for you. One person knows everything. You know more than what the other person does. And I find it to be um, not a nice way to have a conversation. I'm not going to label it. But for me, I would rather have a discussion with another person who sets boundaries, asks for permission, and is curious. Yeah, that's um, very, again, very important. Setting boundaries is is crucial. It's, it's like going on a date and then dating for the second time and looking where this relationship might go. I think that's, you know, you've got to, one has to set boundaries in life in general. And there, there's actually, while you were talking and sharing that very sort of broad, open-minded view, we've also got to put our feet in the shoes of people who are incredibly Look, we're warm-blooded blooded creatures, but some people are hot-blooded and everyone has an opinion or would like to have an opinion. And it's me, me, me. They're not thinking, well, why, can't, why is it that we as human beings can't collaborate more in favor of not just me, 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 but togetherness and looking at how we can serve one another and serve the country. And whether we like it or not, the bottom line is everyone should vote and everyone has their right to vote. Uh, and everyone has their own opinion. And that's the approach I'd like to suggest people go down that route of with whatever your opinion might be, speak about your journey, speak about your experience, speak about what you feel is could be best for the country, but do it in a way that it's not shoved down someone's throat or with aggression or with any anger, because that's not going to solve anything on any level. It's really not. And then at the end of the day, when we all vote, and hopefully we are educated voters, do your research, then place your vote, then whoever ends up leading the country, that's for them to take the country forward. And we, as, you, as, as the public, have unfortunately have got to really just bite the bullet and go with what the new government's going to do for the, the country, hopefully with influence from their sort of members that they appoint to support them running the country. And I'm just going to go on a little bit further into this. For example, in the United Kingdom, when the UK left the, the European Union, unfortunately, there was such a lack of education in the country or people hadn't bothered to educate themselves on the whole journey of what the consequences, what would, what would happen if this happened. And a lot of people were incredibly short-sighted or they were brainwashed to a degree. And so when certain people were asked, so who did you end up voting for once the vote had been cast and we had now had exited, oh, I voted for Brexit. Well, why did you do that? Well, I don't know. It was sort of the thing to do. Hmm, okay. No thoughts gone into it. And hence why we as human beings need to sort of do our research, listen to people's points of view for sure, but stay very clear in your own mindset of how you're going to take that information and then understand if what you're hearing is apparent, is it true? Is it going to serve the country? Is it going to serve us as, as human beings? Yes, absolutely brilliant. I agree with you. We do have a comment from Alice Lowe. Nice to have you with us, Alice. Coach Alice is in the house. It's always good etiquette to argue over progress and prosperity without being personal to our opposition. In USA campaigns, both candidates are roasting each other on sensitive layers. Yes. Love it. Love this it. is Thank one. You. Of the, I love what Alice has put there. Superb. Absolutely. And to Alice's point, 
something I want to share is that whether it's a debate or whether it's campaigning, if we stay on topic about the issues as opposed to he's a loser, she's a loser, he's a liar. I don't want to hear any of that, honestly. I want to hear what is it that you stand for? If you're in office, what will you do? What will you do that's different than what's been done? Not the name calling. And I think, again, this goes back to setting boundaries. Using names, negativity to describe someone else, to point the finger at someone else. Again, you have those three fingers pointing back at you. That when you're labeling someone, you're calling someone stupid or you're judging them. What is that really saying about you? What is it about what they're doing that's bringing something up in you that you're reacting the way you're reacting? Thoughts? Hey, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, that's that's a very poignant point, uh, as most of your points are. Just a little bit of history about, I, I can't remember exactly when it was, but maybe three or four years ago, I was contacted by GB TV News, which is a massive global uh, platform and is talking about what's going on around the world, but obviously around Great Britain. And the Labour uh, person, Angela Hartnett, was uh, brought into, into the limelight because of her bad and foul mouth and her language and s slating the opposition. And I was asked to comment on this. And obviously, I was very sort of uh, open-minded about it, but I did make one very strong point. Choose your language. You, know, you don't have to swear. You don't have to put someone down. No matter your accent, you can converse clearly, concisely, and professionally. You do not need to slag someone off in order to win a seat or win an election. And unfortunately, where I think we as human beings have become fairly blind is we, we overlook that or we forgive them for what they've said or what they've done. And we tend to be drawn in through this vacuum of what all the other buzzing and and commotion that's going on and that's almost forgotten about whereas you know at the end of the day who is going to be leading the country what are they behaving like what are they saying what are they doing are they reliable are they trustworthy are they authentic are they actually true true leaders or is, are they out for themselves there's so many questions to ask yourself when it comes to this 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 very sensitive subject and area Absolutely. And I'm glad that you brought up mainstream media as well, because I found myself no longer listening to any of these, these programs that I used to watch because I end up feeling overwhelmed with negativity. And it's hard to, to know who's actually telling the truth and who's putting a spin on it for publicity reasons or maybe to support their own party. So that's why here at this platform, we talk about education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. It's a positive experience. So for our people who are watching or listening, how would you describe a positive, proactive approach to avoid getting into confrontations, whether it's about politics or anything else? That boils down to very much, I think, active listening and, and being open-minded and taking on board the other person's inputs it could be an opinion could be them voicing something they've heard it really boils down to your emotional intelligence really and your etiquette and your manners and using moments of pausing and thinking things through uh, giving that opportunity for that safe window of either you're going to say something that's going to add fuel to the flames or you're going to say something that could circumvent uh, a, a, a situation turning in a very negative sort of way and, and causing a what may have started as a conversation into an argument or into sort of unpleasantries being exchanged. And, you know, this is, we're human beings, as I said earlier, we're hot blooded, we, we, have, our, we have moments. And also the other, the other area that I'd like to bring into play is timing. Timing is everything when it comes to having various conversations. And this is something you speak very um, passionately about and very professionally about in, in, in the art of listening in, in, you know, in, as, an, as the listening mentor in your listening uh, art of listening program. And that for me is very, very important. So there's, there, there are lots of dynamics when it comes to 
our conversations and our engagement with one another. I think that's really what we need to take on board here. I absolutely agree with you. And and Philip, for you, you and your organization, for myself, we're trained, we're educated on how to listen at an elevated level, how to handle volatile situations, for example, but everyone is not. So what I would just like to share also is when you are having a conversation with someone and you're listening to what they're saying and you feel these emotions start bubbling up inside of you, possibly take a deep breath and clear your mind and just focus on what the other person is saying. Not that you can take how you're feeling and then express it in some other way. Because the person you're having a conversation with, they have something to share and they wanna share it with you. You may or may not agree with what they have to say, but as someone in the role of the listener, that's your job. Your job is to listen. It's not to debate. If you're a debater, if you're a professional debater, if you're a trial attorney, for example, and you're that's what you're used to in that, that environment, that's what you're supposed to be doing then. That's part of your job. But as a human, I feel our job, our role is to be there for one another and to listen to what the other person has to say. Now, Philip, if you are in a situation, a relationship where you're constantly being put down or you're constantly being judged or the other person's constantly providing solutions that you didn't ask for, what do you have to look at in terms of your own responsibility and accountability to that relationship and what's going on? Well, as the person uh, on the receiving end of always being put down and, and dictated to, so to speak, you've got to stand up for yourself and you've got to bring emotion and feeling into this very in, in a very very strong and very sort of dynamic way. Because the moment you share how someone makes you feel. Um, or how it positions you as a human being and where it places you mentally and emotionally, I'm praying and hoping that the other person starts to understand or realizes that this is not the right route to go down. Now, unfortunately, we get people who have had challenges through their lives. I'm, I'm, being, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. They might have, you know, um, not had a, a very pleasant upbringing or whatever it is. So a lot of us in life is monkey see, monkey do. Uh, and what, at times one can land up in a relationship where <clears throat> the other person's had a, a, a very, well, all of us have had different upbringings, but hopefully the principles or the, the love and tenderness and care have been there, but that's not always the case in family. So we've got to sort of take certain things on board and because it's the old adage in life, monkey see, monkey do. And, you know, if you have a narcissist that you are involved with, then with all due respect, not a lot is ever going to change uh, in that respect. And as hard as it is, it's time to draw a line in the sand and move away from that. Uh, but unfortunately, manipulation and mind games get involved. And it's a very, very challenging space uh, to sort of delve into. Uh, and I'm, I'm hesitant to sort of expand too much into this because it is, it is very, very sensitive. But that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg, if I could put it that way. Yes, and I, I believe I know where you're going with that. So it's not as though we can walk away from every person in our life if there's some kind of discourse. So we have to learn literally a diplomatic way of handling it. So what I found is if I feel emotions start coming on, I know that something the person is saying to me is causing something to come up in me, but I'm going to put that aside so that I can be the active elevated listener because that's the role that I play. Now in my personal life, sometimes it's not always that easy to remember that the training and the coaching that we have, but what I typically will do is I will just, I'll sit up very straight. I'll stand very straight. I'll have my hands just clasp and I'll just listen. And then when the person's finished with their dissertation, their tirade, I'll say, what else do you have to share? And then when they're finished, I'll say, thank you for sharing how you feel. And then I may or may not say anything. And I may or may say, I'm going to be walking away now. <laughs> and then, but, but there's so many times when people, they really get something out of the drama of, and if you think of a, a fire, 
and you start putting more fuel on the fire so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the role that we play by feeding into it. So I choose not to do that if if and when I can. I, I, I really have that in the front of my mind that I don't want this to get bigger and bigger. And sometimes you have to just evaluate the relationship and say, this isn't healthy for me. And it's the same thing with political etiquette. It's not healthy possibly to continue this dialogue with someone. Don't have the conversation anymore. Put that on the do not talk about list. What are your thoughts about uh, that? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Do not talk about list. And I think everyone should take that guidance and, st that guidance and steering in, in life. Um, it's something... It's definitely something we've had to do on certain topics and subjects and the areas that we know would rub some up the wrong way in a split second. And I think that's sensitivity and that's your empathy kicking in. And that's what's your emotional intelligence once again, kicking in and slowing down and not overreacting. Now, again, there are going to be moments when we do pop and that is a moment where we've got to realize that was unnecessary and make an apology and draw that line in the sand, not make an apology and then try and explain why you popped because that's not an apology. That's very true. I love that you shared that because so many times people want to give us all the backstory and the history. And, and, and I, sometimes I just think to myself, you said you weren't interested. You don't want to do it. I don't need to know anything more, but for whatever reason, people feel like they have to take the whole cart and take everything out of it and tell you, give you an explanation. And the bottom line is they still don't want to do whatever it is. They still don't want to have the conversation. So I accept that. I think let's let's cut to the chase. We don't need to have a long conversation about something we already know the outcome, which the outcome is you don't want to do it. You don't want to talk about it. It's not going to change. Absolutely, Dr. Jacqueline. It's, it's always going to be a situation where we do sometimes over egg things um, or say something we shouldn't have said. And, and I, I think hopefully this is maturity kicking in and education kicking in and, and taking uh, various professional development programs and courses during one's life. If I could give my 20 year old self, 18 year old self, 21 year old self, some guidance and steering is to really understand the art of connecting and communicating with one another and take it to a deep level and therefore focus heavily on emotional intelligence because this will serve anybody out there throughout their lives and I, I just wish people would understand the power and the importance of etiquette manners and emotional intelligence i really i can't tell you uh, how fundamental a, a platform it is how fundamental a deep rooted investment it is and a deep rooted foundation it will go and take you to the most incredible places in the world. It'll open doors for you in organizations and friendships and connecting with people. It is dynamic. It really and truly is. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, at this platform, USA Global TV and Radio, we have a requirement. When I say we, I have a requirement that I've instilled, which is anyone who wants to become a TV show host or the, a panelist, a talking head, they have to take my course, The Power of Elevated Listening. And I feel very strongly about that. And the reason I bring it up is if someone says to me, you know what, I'm not interested in taking the course. It, it's a two hour course for $39. So you can take it and stop and start it. So to me, what that says is this person is not coachable. This person yeah. is not open. And many times I'll hear, well, I did this already and I accomplished that already. And, and I think to myself, that's not the point. The point is we can all do more. We can all be open to learning. And so when someone says I'm not interested, then that this is not the place for them. And so that's just a, a boundary I've set for this platform. Point being that we are entitled to set boundaries. And that doesn't mean that everyone has to like them. That doesn't mean everyone is going to be a good fit for us personally or professionally. What is it you do there at the British School of Excellence in terms of setting boundaries, maybe for your clientele or maybe for your alumni or maybe just for your courses in general?
that's again a really wonderful overview and and giving people a, a, a clear picture and understanding i just want to break away from that for a second because let's go back to the the scenario of political etiquette and navigating you know that art of diplomacy and and showing respect because again there are very clear boundaries as to what our so-called representatives of, 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 of our political parties should stick to. Uh, and, and, and as we know, a lot of them step out, outside those boundaries. We seem to have lost Philip for the moment. He seems to be frozen. Let's um, take him off until he comes back. So this happens with live broadcasts. So I want you to think about wherever you are in your life and where you're having strife or discontent, or maybe you're even arguing with other people. What can you do? What can you take away from this program when it comes to setting boundaries and asking for permission? So each of us has a role as a human being. And I truly feel it's our, our responsibility to treat other people with respect, treat people the way we would like to be treated. Here's Philip, he's back. Yeah, so as I was saying, I lost a signal there for a split second. I just feel that boundaries are very, very important throughout our lives. And if we understand and appreciate those boundaries, it's, I suppose it's, 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 think of a game of sports. There, there are rules of engagement in sports and thank goodness there are. And there should be rules and, and boundaries set in these political elections, these elections that are going on now in the US, the elections that went on in the UK, elections that are going on, on around different parts of the world. They've recently had elections in South Africa. But unfortunately, a lot of the time, the people that are involved in potential candidates to run the country, they don't stick to these boundaries. They don't stick to these rules of engagement and unfortunately again as the as let's call us the locals the the public are often drawn into certain aspects and we often hear what we want to hear we often don't look at things rationally we often don't really really take on board what you go back to all time and time I mean, it's true listening to what the message actually is we're very, very good as human beings of getting rid of things we don't really want to hear and we start to hear things we do want to start hearing. And this is where we trip ourselves up in life, in conversations, in business, in relationships. And funny enough, on the radio today, uh, it was saying, they were, they were saying that uh, a few times a day, we say to people, what did you say? And by the second time you're saying that, you just start to shake your head. You actually haven't really heard the other person. It's fascinating what we do as human beings and how we are wired. Very true, Philip. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're unable to focus. So if you and I are having a conversation and I'm doing something else at the same time, I cannot focus on what you're saying. What's interesting is someone might say to me, they're setting a boundary, asking permission, they'll say, is this a good time for us to have a conversation? No, it's actually not because I'm on a television show right now and I cannot text with you and I cannot be on the phone. And then they continue on anyway. So I think to myself, OK, I already told you it's not a good time, but you insist. So I'm not listening. So whatever information you take away from that is. But that's how people they get so highly emotional about wanting to share what they want to share at that moment. It's the same thing with politics. People, let's say they watch a debate. They become overwhelmed because they're so angry. And I understand, but th at the same time, it is politics. So <laughs> there is some, some back and forth, like a ping pong match, you know, game that it, it's to be expected because that's how politics is, at least here in this country. Thoughts? I think politics, politics at the end of the day is something the world over have they all have their nuances and their and their way of sort of getting across and, and even brainwashing the public and for me it is so important as human beings that we start to smarten up a little bit and start to really start to read between the lines i mean 
we are centuries and centuries in of different leaders taking control and taking effect and running countries. And there's some great examples out there. And surely those people that have done a really good job should be able to guide us and steer us in who we should potentially be putting our vote toward. And, and, and one thing that really does make me um, question a few things is when you get a huge population like the UK, which is 60 million on a small island, I believe it's 350 million people here in the USA and around the world, there are various different numbers in each country, obviously, to talk about. But you get one or two candidates who are so-called fit for the job. There's sh surely there again in itself is a massive disconnect. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Sometimes I just wish somebody else was running. <laughs> Could we have another choice, please? <laughs> but the amount of Absolutely. money and time. There's such really smart people out there, Dr. Jacqueline. And the yeah. thing is, as well, maybe they're just too smart. They know that they wouldn't, for love of money, for all the tea in China, would not want to take on this major, very arduous journey and role. It is. It's a massive responsibility. And yes, if you say you're going to run the country, you better be able better be able to run it, you know, with a very dynamic uh, stance on it and, and help people not just look at it from an egotistical uh, sort of almost arrogant approach. You know, it's me, me, me. No, it's not you. You. It, it's like when the queen uh, was put into power as the queen of England, she committed her whole life to the United Kingdom. The Absolutely. United Kingdom was put first. You know, yes. and, 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 and that's where every leader should be almost shoved into that corner and slapped around the chops 20 times until they, they say, yes, it's about the people. It's not about me. And it is about producing results that we all are trying so hard as human beings to make a living. And some people have made wonderful amounts of money. Others are just, just getting by. And this needs to be a fine line as well and balance because... People who do and are prepared to go out there and work exceptionally hard and do very good things in life, they become uh, very sort of philanthropic in, in life and they, they support people, they support charities. They often are hit the hardest by, by governments coming in and saying, oh, we're going to tax the rich so the poor can benefit. Everyone has to understand there's a balance that needs to be struck here and everyone needs to understand that there are no real free handouts You've got to go out there and find a job and start to earn your wage and earn your livings and, again, look for opportunities to better yourself and, therefore, to add value to your family, to the economy, and to what the world can offer us as human beings is huge. But it down, it's down to the leaders. The leaders have to encourage growth and development and education and support the people who need it the most. And it's not necessarily by taking the wealthy's money and helping support the, 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 the poorer people or the people who are less privileged. It's We've got to find other solutions to the economy in this world because there is so much opportunity out there, whether it be such simple things as, as, as learning to farm the land and use your, your artistical talents or whatever it might be. There are so many wonderful people out there that have huge talents that can contribute. It just needs to be realized by the right people. Very well said, Philip. Thank you so much. I can't believe our show is already over. 40 minutes has flown by. I would love for you to share a little bit about your organization, how people can get in touch. And of course, we're going to run the phenomenal sponsorship that we have. So tell us how people can reach out and who would you like to contact you? Certainly. The British School of Excellence is a global operation organization, and we are excited to share with you our website, which is www.thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. Reach out to us via hello at thebritishschoolofexcellence.com, and we love engaging in conversation. We really and truly do. We've got an amazing team behind us who are there to answer the phone, answer emails, answer your WhatsApp, answer your instant messages. We love engaging and connecting with people from all walks of life, all backgrounds. We're currently running the Polish Professional at the moment. We have got a wonderful opportunity for anyone out there who wants to go into this industry and learn to coach and train people and give them these quintessential tools to become incredibly positive, very confident, very powerful human beings. That is our Train the Trainer starting live in London on the 11th of 
uh, it's November, so it's a few, six, eight weeks away, can you believe it? And that is also a, a possible to do it virtually as, as, an, as you can come in on, on, on camera. We've got all the technology for you to join in there. And then we've got various other programs for uh, teenagers, mindset and confidence, mindset and resilience, mindset and money and so forth. Take some time, look at the website. We've got a fantastic YouTube channel with some educational videos on there. You will get the gist of what we're all about and how passionate we are about making a change to this world now and for the future. Thank you so much, Philip. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing this stage with you today. And it's uh, just wonderful. So I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. And I wanna thank everyone for watching and listening. We did have a few technological issues, but everything has been resolved. So thank you again, Philip. Enjoy the rest of your day. And Dr. for- Jack, our Thank you so much. And we look forward to having you join us for our next program. Our next show is coming up. It's the Compassion Project with Dr. Daniel Lord. Let's take a look now at the Polish professional Philip was referring to, and you can get information here about how you too can become the Polish professional. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence, building confidence, changing lives. And now proudly presenting the Polish Professional. On a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose, delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, Learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module 4. Mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence. Navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module 5. Elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module 6. Unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module 7, Mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module 8, Mastery and Dining Etiquette, building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance, and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence, our investors in people, let us invest in you.